Hello and welcome back to Core. We will be starting day four today. So, if you recall in the previous episode, we had a little conversation with Faust about his smoking habit. And it seems that he's willing to try and, you know, get over it during this little two week vacation thing that we're doing for, I'm assuming, Robert. And yeah, so let's see if that happens. Also, there's some stuff going on between Robert and Mike, but I'm not sure if that's going to develop. Well, oh, and today is a day in which we get to hang out with Gus and Ed, and just them two, so let's see what happens there. My eyes open up slowly for some reason. I don't feel tired, so maybe this is my body telling me not to oversleep again. I don't really know what time it is right now, but the natural light coming from outside isn't too bright, so I'd say it's early enough. Wow, I'm surprisingly awake to deduce that right after waking up. I feel something between my arms, but quickly realize it's the cushion I was using as a pillow. I guess that's the closest thing I've gotten to cuddle so far. It's not like I need this or anything. It's not like I got myself into this position by choosing to sleep on that couch alone. Hmm, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. The vibration of my phone on the table in front of me forces me to focus my attention back to reality. Who could be sending me a message this early? Mom? But why now? No point in guessing if I just check. I shuffle my way closer to the table, stretching my arm out so that I can get my phone without changing my position. Luckily for me, I'm a long boy. The phone is in my paw soon after. Rob, you awake? Don't worry if you're not, but I'm in front of your house. Excuse me? I check the time, just to make sure. Yes, it's only 7am. Again. I feel like replying to him, but he's just outside, apparently. I sit up on the couch, looking over at the door, and I can distinguish his shape behind the crystal window pane. What is he doing here so soon? Did something happen? Whatever, no time to think. He's legit waiting outside. I stand up, quickly stretching before I head out. And, just as promised, there's Gus, who looks up from his phone to me with his usual smile on his face. Hey, morning, Rob. I didn't, like, wake you up, right? No, luckily for you, I happened to wake up a bit before you texted me, but still. What are you doing here so soon, Gus? I thought you'd be happy to see me. Of course I am, but it's super early. Is something the matter? Nah, not really. I mean, I have to buy some food at the supermarket, and since I had to come this way anyway... Figured why not message Rob to see if he's awake like last time, you know? Alright, give me a minute. I need to process all this. I just woke up. Take your time. So he's here to check on me. Since he was going to buy some food at the supermarket? Did I get all that right? I guess he does miss me after all. Okay, so, do you need help with the bags or something? No, no. As I said, I mostly wanted to see if you were awake and if you wanted to come with me. In other words, you want help with the bags. Don't make me spell it out. I just want to see if you want to spend some time with me for a bit. I poke my tongue at him with a smile. I'm starting to think one of the reasons why I was so cranky yesterday morning was because Gus wasn't around. Of course. If someone else is awake, they're welcome to come with, too. I think you and I are the only ones awake in core at this time, Gus. Figured. But the offer's there, so what you gonna do then? Admittedly, I'm not really sure what to answer. On one hand, I'd love to spend more time with him. But on the other hand, I'd have to find a way to tell the others that I'm gone and hope that they're okay with it. If I stay, I could get some more sleep. But I'm not that sleepy anyway. I woke up for some reason, I guess. Gus is staring at me, almost looking worried, since I must have been staring into the void for a few seconds without saying anything. You know what? Count me in. Nice. He comes closer and hugs me, excited. I don't expect it, but I don't fight it, hugging him back. That being said, you'll have to give me a few minutes first. I need to get dressed and leave a note so that they know I'll be back soon. That's okay. I was ready to wait for another half hour if you didn't answer the text immediately. 
Really? Ah, oh, well, I'm here now, so that doesn't matter. Alright, wait right here, okay? I'll try to be fast. Not going anywhere, Rob. Even if I hear him, I still turn around and raise a finger to let him know that he has to wait for me before I enter the house again. Nothing too eventful happens when I head back to use the bathroom and get changed. I have to use Mike and Faust's bathroom, though, but I manage to be sneaking enough not to wake them up, it seems. However, since I'm trying to be fast, and since these sweatpants are comfortable, I decide to wear a different shirt and call it a day. It's a bit lighter than my usual shirt, and I feel a bit cold, but fuck it, it's done. Alright, oh, and I write a small note letting people know that I'm out with Gus for a bit, and that I have my phone with me, so they don't worry. After all that is covered, I head out, getting the otter's attention. He looks surprised for some reason. What? Is something wrong? I didn't wear the shirt backwards, did I? No, not at all. Just thinking you look pretty good in that. Well, thanks, but it's just a shirt. Not everyone can rock shirts, you know. Alright, alright, let's get going. I haven't had breakfast and I'm fine with that, but I might get hungry later. I'll buy you some cookies or something for the troubles. Nice, free food. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping he'd offer. I let Gus lead the way, since he's the one who seems to know where we're going. If I remember correctly, there should be a supermarket not too far from here, but it doesn't seem like we're going there. How did you sleep today? You seem a bit tired yesterday. Ah, I was, but I got some nice sleep last night, or at least, I don't feel tired at all. That's good to hear. Did you dream something? Maybe that's why you woke up in a better mood today. Hmm, I think I did, but I can't remember. I get silent as I remember what I dreamed about. How did I forget? I thought I'd stop dreaming about him once I got here, but... I guess I was a fool for thinking that. Uh, Rob? Sorry, I feel like I've been dreaming a lot, but I don't remember anything. I'm not sure if he believes me, since there was a suspicious moment of silence between us, but he doesn't press further. No need to apologize to me for not remembering your dreams. It's normal. I don't think I've dreamt for a long time myself. Really? Nothing at all? Well, maybe dumb dreams, but nothing worth remembering. Mostly stuff like being able to fly away from here. Should I ask? He's mentioned that a few times now. Supposedly, the meaning of dreaming while flying varies depending on how you feel while you dream. Ah, we're seriously going to analyze my dream? If you want, it's part of what I studied, although it's more like a curiosity thing. Dreams are just dreams most of the time. Taking psychology serious, it's nice to see. Oh, how do you know I'm studying that? I'm not sure I told you. Remember how Ed didn't tell you I'd be here? Well, he talked a long time on the phone. He told me about you and all that. I think it suits you, honestly. The Robert I knew always took care of people. He gives me a genuine smile that makes me grin, too. It's good to hear that people are proud of what I'm doing. Anyways, I think if I dream, I always end up dreaming about flying away. But I think I never do it. I end up flying in circles. But I don't really wake up in a bad mood, so I guess I still enjoy flying in my dreams? Hmm. So, what's the results? That you're absolutely bonkers, and we need to get you to a mental hospital as fast as possible. Wow. I'll remember this one. I'm glad I made him grin with that. I think he knows perfectly well what that type of dream means. I guess he really feels like he wants to leave, but he hasn't done anything to do so, or maybe he can't. My smile disappears from my face when I see where we're heading, or rather, when I see Gus opening the door of his car, parked right in front of us. Alright, hop in. The supermarket has a parking, so we won't take too long. I'm frozen on the spot. It takes an actual effort for me to breathe again. He's already driven me around before. This is no different. I just... I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't ready. 
He didn't even mention it. Rob? Gus is looking at me from inside the car, concerned. I guess I did just stop on the spot without saying anything. Deep breaths, Robert. It's fine. You've already been through this, and nothing happened before. Sorry, I wasn't expecting to drive there right now. Ah, uh, we can walk if you want instead. No, it's alright, really. I walk up to the opposite door, getting inside before he can say anything. My mind is set. We'll be fine. I put the seatbelt on while he keeps looking at me with a concerned look, so I shrug. I really don't want to face this right now. What, are we going to teleport or something instead of driving? Pfft, <sighs> of course not. That cheers the mood up, but I notice it's because he also decided to drop it. He's as understanding as I remember him being. I'm glad that hasn't changed. He turns the key to start the car, but before I can focus too much on that, he asks me something. So, can I ask you something about Mike? Well, sure, what's up? Those tattoos he has on his arm, do you know if they mean anything? You know, you two have that in common. What do you mean? They mean absolutely nothing. They just thought he'd look good with them. I think he literally had a moment of divine clarity or something. He just went for it, and no one tried to stop him because we didn't think he'd do it. But three days later, there they were. That sounds like something you'd do if you were into tattoos. I'm glad that I was never into them then, but back on the subject. After those, he never had the urge to get any more. The popular theory is that he realized how much it hurts to him when they were doing them, so that's all he's getting. With No, that's funny. With how big he is, you'd figure he'd handle some pain and all that. I hold back a comment with a smile. He doesn't know about the stabs, so... Alright, I don't want to go down this trail of thought right now. Wait, we're actually arriving in the parking lot already. I don't even notice. I look at Gus, surprised. He wasn't speeding up or anything. I would have noticed. I guess we really were close because the conversation didn't last that long. What? You're looking at me as if I did some magic or something. What's on your mind? Nothing, I guess. Just... Thanks, Gus. Eh? I don't respond. Since I don't think I need to, I'm just glad he distracted me to the point of not noticing we're here already. He finds a spot to park the car, and I step out as soon as I calmly can. I don't want to make it obvious. I stretch once I'm out, feeling the cold wind against my body. It should warm up soon at some point. Man, I can't wait to go to the beach or something, and be able to swim and play around with everyone. Hey mister, your head is in the clouds, we have stuff to buy. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was thinking of the beach. He gestures me to follow him with his hand, and we start walking towards the supermarket. I'm guessing you don't have a beach in Moreland? Heh, <laughs> no, it's a city in the middle of nowhere. It has a few public pools though, but it's not the same. The smell of the sea and the wind and the sand, and the lack of kids screaming and splashing everywhere. What's wrong? You're not a fan of kids? You were one once, a very cool one too. I can reason with adults, but not with kids. But who knows, I might have to adapt if I want to be a psychologist. I think it'd be a nice addition. Kids need help sometimes too, sadly. Yes, you're right. I just think that there's more capable people than me, but I'll keep it in mind, I guess. Hey, don't do it for me. If you think you're not ready for that, don't, okay? Alright, that sounds fair. I'll still think about it, but alright. For some reason, I didn't expect him to be this understanding. I mean, he's always been very open-minded. But I can tell he's trying not to sound like he's influencing my choices. It's more respectful than what I expected, I guess. I'm glad to see Gus is this mature. See? This is why I prefer to talk with adults than with kids. Once inside, Gus gets a shopping cart and we both head to the food products together. So, what do you need to buy? I know I'm here to chill with you, but I might as well help if I can. Mmm, actually, I just wanted you around to chat and give me company, but... 
how about you go and get me some stuff like yogurts? Maybe a pizza? Will I go and get everything else? I think I can do that. Oh, and some cheese, please. I won't take too long. Gus waves his hand to me as he heads down one of the food aisles. This place isn't terribly big, so I'm sure I'll see him in a few minutes. I follow the cold, paying attention to what's inside the freezers until I find the dairy products. Taking a basket from nearby, I start getting what Gus asked me. He didn't really ask me to grab that much, so I'm done almost immediately. He said I won't take long, so I guess he's coming here once he's done. I suppose I'll wait, trying not to freeze to death. Might as well check my phone while I wait, and I have a message. Huh? Hey, where are you? The bed's getting cold without you. <laughs> Alright, I know he means that in teasing, funny way like he usually does, but I can still feel my cheeks warm up when I read it. I left a note in the living room. I'm out with Gus helping him with some shopping. So soon? He won't kidnap you or anything? I joke about that, but I feel you haven't even gotten out of bed and you're half awake, so you'd actually call the police. You are scary sometimes, but you're right. Of course I am. We've slept together for a few days, but I know you enough, big guy. I'm not typing that. <laughs> well, tell Gus hello from my part. And until you come back, I'm going to cuddle the pillow as if it was you. Robert, can you stop blushing every single time? Man, it's like you haven't playfully flirted with him in the past. We're just kidding. I don't think Faust will let you sleep for that long. Man, I'm trying to be cute here. Don't dismiss my attempts to seduce you. I'm hanging up, Mike. We're not even calling each other. Can't hear you, going through a tunnel, I'm losing signal you. I can't stop myself from snickering at that. We're still joking like we used to, even if something feels different. But it doesn't feel bad, it feels comfortable. I feel good following his game. Hey there, stranger. Took so long that you started to play phone games while waiting for me? Gus scares me, standing right in front of me. I don't even notice him. Did he just come back, or has he been staring at me for a while? Whoa, I didn't want to scare you, man. You okay? Yeah, sorry. I was chatting with Mike. He didn't read the note I left in the living room. He says hi. Ah, uh, tell him? No, actually, it's fine. I'll tell him hi myself later. He walks slightly in front of me, pushing the shopping cart, while I bring the basket with the fresher stuff. It's funny how something as common as shopping can be so pleasant, when you're doing it with someone else. I mean, it's not like we're having the time of our lives, but I'm just enjoying this normality. It's almost like I'm living part of Gus's life, his routine. It's a thought that feels nice to me. I must have been spacing out because by the time I look around, we're back in the parking lot. Gus is carrying both bags, while I am not carrying anything. Since I wasn't paying attention, I didn't notice. It's too late to offer some help, though. Sorry, Gus. We soon reach the car again, and Gus drops one of the bags gently so he can open the trunk of the car and place them there. He takes a look at me, looking like he has something on his mind, but he doesn't ask, closing the trunk. Is everything okay, Gus? Yeah. Yeah, why? I don't know. You've been silent for a bit, I guess. Well... I guess I wanted to ask you something, but it's just me being super curious. Nothing serious. Alright, we're friends, so you can ask anything. I actually didn't think you'd be too shy to ask me something. Pfft. <sighs> you know me. I'm not shy, but... He opens the door to the car, and I prepare myself mentally to be trapped inside the metal box for a few minutes. It's okay. You're just... Are you guys gay? <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. Whoa, I feel dizzy, as if those words just whipped my brain or something. I was really not expecting that. What? Huh? I'm sorry. I've just had my suspicions about some of y'all, but the more time I spend with y'all, the more I think. There's no way these guys don't like dick with how they behave. 
Gus. I let a sincere laugh escape me, and I see him laughing too, as he turns the car on and I fasten my seatbelt. I mean, I'm personally not hiding it, but I didn't think I'd have this talk with Gus. And then again, he's been surprising us with how open he is, so I should have seen this coming. Why, are you interested in someone? Is that it? Keep this between us, but you're a bunch of cute guys. Don't blame me for trying to know who I can aim for or not. Wow, you're way more straightforward than I thought. The car starts to move and I tense up for a second, but the conversation has enough of my attention to relax shortly after. What's the point of lying? I mean, I'm not looking to play keeps with anyone, but... Guess my doors are not closed, if you know what I mean. Huh, would you look at that? I'm right to suspect you're gay then, right? Damn, what gave it away? My hair? The way I speak? The fact that I'm obviously into guys? It was the fact that I saw you on the Captor app. You know, the gay dating app. Shit, really? I haven't seen you on it. I wouldn't have been asking you if I saw you there. I'm kidding. I never had that app. But I heard about it. Good to know you do. Listen, don't judge me. I have to have fun from time to time. I poke my tongue at him, considering this a personal victory. I feel like catching Gus with his guard down is a very rare sight. So? So what? Rob, are you guys gay or not? Ah, sorry, sorry. So I could tell you, but... Why don't you tell me what you think? I'll confirm or deny later. You're making this so much more difficult than it should be, man. Come on, I'm curious what you think. Okay, okay, let me see. I'm absolutely sure Ed is gay. No straight guy would have earrings on their right ear. Don't tell me you believe that. I mean, you're right. Ed is gay, but... I'm half kidding, but I haven't met a straight guy yet that has earrings on that ear. Okay, one out of five. What about the others? Mike could be gay, but he could also be one of those guys that's like, bro, I'm not gay as long as balls don't touch, but suck my dick, you know? I'm pretty sure those kinds of people only exist in porn, Gus. So, you confirmed he's gay. Thank yous. He's bisexual, so not really. The important thing is that he likes men, at least. Okay, I'm not really sure about Faust or Hector. Oh? I normally wouldn't have doubts about someone like Faust, but there's something about him that makes me doubt it. It could be that he's just not sure or something, though. As for Hector, I don't know, he's very cute and shy sometimes. But he goes out of his way to make lewd jokes, and that's something straight guys do. I'm sorry, what about you? You were the first one joking about hiding your sex toys from your roommates. See, I wasn't kidding, though. I just hide them. Gay people either don't answer or are sincere, but they usually don't exaggerate for the sake of joking. I'm very surprised with how much Gus seems to know about gay people, but at the same time, I'm not really sure any of these stereotypes are a thing. Well, you got a good eye, at least. I think Faust likes men, but he's pretty closed about it, and we simply never asked Hector. You're not curious? I could ask him. Please don't. If he wants to tell us, he'll tell us. Okay, fair enough. But anyways... You're definitely gay, Rob. I have no doubts about it. Oh, what gave me away? My hair? The way I speak? The fact that I'm obviously into guys? Don't intimidate me, you ass. The car starts to slow down, and I notice that we're right behind the house already. Shame. I was having fun. Guess and I step out of the car, but then he leans on it to look at me with a small smile on his face. You didn't really give me a lot of clues, but you're a very, um, personal guy, I'd say. Personal? What do you mean? Like, you don't mind talking about anything, you know? Spending time alone with someone... Listening unconditionally, always interested in the other person. I could be wrong, but I think you might be the gayest guy in the group. The gayest guy? What does that even mean? 
I mean, in the sense that, I don't know, it's like you're very adaptable. Like, you can make everyone feel very comfortable in every situation. Are, are you implying my personality is I'm whatever others like? No, no. But you are more mellow than I remember you were. Not a bad thing, but, you know, makes me think you're not only gay, but looking for some. A smirk shows on his face and it causes my cheeks to heat up a bit. Normally, that wouldn't be the case. But with what happened yesterday, I can't really deny that. You got one thing right. I am gay, but I'm not looking for some. I think. You think? I can't really answer, because I don't really know what to do. Instead, I look away, knowing my cheeks are red, probably showing under my fur. What? You needy or something? Ech, Gus! I'm not judging, just an observation. Seems like you haven't gotten laid in some times, all. He's not wrong. More than six months now. I never really noticed that much until yesterday. I mean, it's not like I'm desperate for it, but I wouldn't complain for some action, maybe. But then, it'd be my first time with someone else. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that thought for now. Hey, don't overthink it, man. It's fine if you are, or if you're not. Someone might show up at some point to help you out. Or not, if you prefer it that way. Who knows? Maybe you have your eyes set on one of your friends already. I feel like I'm about to respond to that, but I... can't. Am I really interested in him in that way? Mike and I have been very good friends for a long time. Is it really okay for me to think about him like this? I mean, he certainly sounded like the idea was appealing to him. We've always been close and even joked about it. I mean, he's funny, cheerful, he could protect me, and we could cuddle together every night. Rob, you're daydreaming about one of your men in there. I feel a poke on my forehead as I hear that, bring me back to reality. I have to stop spacing out when this is brought up. Shut up. You don't know what I was thinking about. Sure thing, man. Okay, as much as I enjoy talking with you, I gotta go back home. Put some of this food in the fridge and stuff. Ah, right. The food. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Hey, listen. I'm free today, so I could hang out with y'all, okay? Let them know. Awesome. I can't wait to spend some time with you again. Gus smiles sweetly at me, and I do the same. I'm not sure why, but I think this conversation made us closer than before. Letting him know more about me, and me learning more about him, it feels nice. Gus is back in my life, and I'm really happy about it. Right, gonna go for now then. See you later, Rob. I step back and wave my hand at him as he steps inside the car and drives away. I know he'll be fine. I place my hands at my pockets and head back into the house. It's still relatively soon, so I'm not sure if the others will be awake. Since no one's awake yet, I walk up to the couch and drop myself there, resting my back on it. The conversation has left me thinking. Would I be able to... I mean... Gus and I? Should I finish what I was doing yesterday? I can feel myself still in the mood. Oh my god. No, after Mike scaring me with the scream and having to pick up the shampoo... I'm starting to realize doing this here is a bad idea. And I can't fucking get to one of the bathrooms because everyone's asleep in the room. Didn't you go into the bathroom before you left with Gus? Man, this sucks. Well, no point in sulking over something I can't do anything about. I close my eyes and try to fall asleep again. But it's not happening. I turn around, I rest my arm on top of my eyes to hide from the sunlight. But nothing. I feel like checking on Gus since I can't sleep, but I've literally just hung out with him. It would be weird. It's not like it matters because I soon hear sounds from the rooms, so I guess everyone's waking up. I decide to stop being lazy, standing up and getting dressed before the others join me in the living room. Breakfast happens and honestly, aside from my escapade to the supermarket with Gus before, this feels like deja vu. I mean, at least this time, I'm present while everyone is having breakfast. But there's nothing really going on. Mostly silence filled by the sound of our munches. However, everyone seems to be okay with it. 
and while I don't mind silence between friends, I'm afraid this is going to be the norm every day now. So, is there something new to talk about? Like, what? We've all just woken up. There hasn't been any time to do anything yet. Is everything okay, Rob? That came a bit out of nowhere. Yes, yes, I guess. I'm just slightly worried. This feels a bit... samey, like yesterday morning. Is that a bad thing? We already said that if we couldn't figure something out together, we'd have the day for ourselves. Well, we haven't even tried yet, and this time is sooner than yesterday. Hmm, well, guess it's free today, from what you said, so we could ask him if there's something he feels like doing. Isn't it still too soon? I still want to do some exercises before lunch. And I guess I'd like to get some air too, but after that, I'm solid for any plans. In other words, we have some time for ourselves until lunch. I won't lie, free time is something that's always appealing to me, so I'm good with it. What do we do after? What do you all feel like doing? No one really responds after that question. In fact, there's an uncomfortable feeling in the living room. I know how comfortable silence feels, and this is not it. Well, I guess Ed was right. We really ran out of ideas on what to do on the fourth day, and we still have more than a week left. I'm... I'm pretty sure there's something else we can do, but we're getting lazy, you know? We came from the city to a small, relaxing town. It's normal that our brains are taking it slow, too. Your brain has always been slow. And here's Hector, spreading love the only way he knows how to. The comment makes us smile, and I can hear Hector giggle next to me. But he has a point. There is no hurry. But if we take any slower, by the time we realize the two weeks are going to pass, and we'll have just gone to three places, and that's it. Come on, there has to be more to do. Maybe it doesn't even have to be something from core. Uh, I know. Why don't we play some of the board games Ed brought with him today? Ah! I knew I'd save the day at some point. Well, I won't be opposed as long as I get some time. Exercising first, we know. You freak of nature, you. Damn, Ed is fired up, huh? I'm sure I can beat you at your own games. Hey, before you two start clashing against each other, what kind of games are available, Ed? I'm glad you asked. I have a modest variety of games that go from heavy strategical games. I'll pass on that. I honestly don't think I can handle that kind of... intensity. In other words, you don't want to think too hard. In that case, I also have simpler games, almost like party games. Don't pull out the drinking games yet. It's too soon. For you. I'm talking about Pictionary and stuff like that. Ah, of course Ed likes that game. He's the only one who can draw. You don't need to know how to draw to play that game, though. The fun part is messing around. You still need your team to guess the picture right, Mike. Or you'll lose. I'm a bit silent, but I'm happy. I'm glad that my idea seems to be sticking. I prefer this to some silence during breakfast. Honestly, I think I prefer anything over silence. Even if I'm comfortable with it. Wait, there's one game I definitely want to play with everyone. I raise my hand to get their attention, or at least Ed's. We should definitely play Mafia with Gus too. That game would be very fun. Mafia? It's a game where we go through day and night cycles, and each of us has a role. Depending on your role, you can do an action at night, or not. There's a specific role that is the mafioso, and that person has to kill a player at night. If he kills everyone, the mafioso wins. But if during the days, he's lynched by the other players, everyone else wins. In other words, it's a game about tricking people. I'm into that. It doesn't sound terribly hard to play. I can give it a try. I agree, it sounds fun. But maybe we should focus on playing Pictionary for today. Sounds like we might need more ideas for another slow day. Ah, well, right. But we're definitely playing that at some point in the future. I really want to. I'm with Robert here. We need more lazy days when we stay at home and play board games. I haven't said that. 
Well, I think we have our afternoon covered for later. I'll text Gus to let him know that he can come over whenever. Preferably after lunch. He bought some food today, so my guess is that he wants to cook his own stuff. Ah, that way we still have time to do our own thing for a while before we hang out together. Great, I'm looking forward to today. That being said, I'm going to go get ready to run for a while. Well, I think I'm going to stay here for a change and read my comics while you're out. And I'm obviously staying upstairs, playing some games. Does anyone really have to ask? I snicker at that comment, and then I look at Faust to find he's looking right back at me. It catches me by surprise, admittedly. I'm heading out to get some air for my part. I was wondering if you'd be fine coming with me, Rob. I'm about to ask him why, but something tells me it might be related to what we talked about yesterday. I'm sorry for breaking my promise to run with you every day, Mike, but I promise I'll do that tomorrow. Probably. Sure thing, I was going to head out too, so it makes sense to go together. No, I would join you guys, but I want to focus on getting some good exercise. I'm sure you'll understand. I'm devastated. You're leaving us. Hey, you're the one who's leaving me. You said you'd work out with me. I knew you'd remember that. I'll make an extra effort another day instead, then. You better. Alright, when you're all done with breakfast, leave everything in the sink. I'll wash it when I'm back. Aha! That means I get to cook today. Only you'd be excited to get to work on cooking after working out. I'm full of energy. I have to use it somewhere, my friend. Faust shows a pleased smile before standing up, and I follow his example. They handle themselves just fine, I'm sure, but... Alright, no one burned down the house while we're gone. I say that in general, but I decide to focus on Hector, who looks almost offended. How the fuck would I burn down the house? What a gratuitous attack! I'm slowly getting used to hearing Hector say fuck, but fuck if it's still strange. Faust pats my back before he opens the door, heading out so that I wave goodbye and follow him. We take a moment to put on my shoes and his sandals before walking down the small stairs in front of the house, reaching the sand. Robert, you should probably buy some sandals for when you go on the beach. I look back at Faust, wanting to make sure that he's fine, but he seems to be relaxed. It's nice considering how emotional we both were yesterday. I wonder what he's thinking about right now. He stares at the sea for a few seconds before he looks at me, then he points at the direction behind the house, where we were yesterday. I figured that's where he wanted to go. I guess I'm glad that he told me to go with him. He walks there in silence while I follow him, making sure I don't trip on his tail. I'm used to it, but I don't think accidentally stepping on it right now would be good. Once we get there, he rests his back against the wall of the house and slides down so that he can sit, and once again, I follow his example, sitting next to him. Don't worry, I'm not going to smoke right now. I think I can still hold back for a while longer, but I can already feel the urge. It has to be tough, but I'm glad you told me to come with you. Well, I trust you, Robert, and I wanted to make sure someone would stop me if I ended up with a cigarette between my fingers. I appreciate his sincerity, but I can tell it's hard for him. He has a specific look on his face, as if he had an itch he knew he shouldn't scratch. I place my hand on his back, rubbing it in a friendly way before sighing. You know I will, but I'm sorry with how I reacted yesterday to some things. It was a bit out of place. I agree, but it's alright. I know we're both emotional people. It's something that I like about you after all. I'm glad you do, but being emotional is not an excuse to put my problems before yours. I see he opens his mouth to probably say something. But he doesn't. Instead, he looks out in front of him, staring at nothing. Most people would think I've had it worse and, well, I don't like it. I don't want to think about it. I just want to move on. I need these guys to put me back in my place if I get too stupid, like Faust did yesterday when I asked for a cigarette. I need to trust them. 
I feel a weight on my shoulder, but it's not Faust's hand. I can barely see without turning my head. But it definitely feels like he rested his head on my shoulder. It'll be easier for me to do that, but I accept the awkward position smiling. I wonder what Mike is going to do for lunch today. You can't let that rivalry go, can you? It's one of the many things that has kept us this close for so long. We like to challenge each other. He's loud and can be annoying sometimes, but he's really helped me grow up as a person. I stay silent so that I can listen to him. His relationship with Mike has always been something fascinating to me. Best friends to the point that they can argue about anything, but they'll always laugh together right after. Not even I can say that I do that. I haven't had a lot of fights with Ed, and things tend to get a bit gloomy for days until him or I feel better. Not to mention Je- Him. Here I am again, thinking about him. I'm also glad to see how Hector is growing up. I haven't seen him this active ever. Can you keep a secret? Of course. Don't take this the wrong way, but I'm still surprised he came with us here. Or, well, that his parents led him. I, mm, I'm not sure his parents know, Rob. What? He hasn't mentioned them at all so far, and I haven't seen him call them over the last four days. Besides, when I went to pick him up before we got on the train to Cor, he was already with Mike. I haven't asked him because it's none of my business, but... That sounds odd. They wouldn't let him stay at Mike's like that. Maybe he knows? Most probably, but again, none of our business. He's right, but I'm definitely curious now. Hector's parents are super protective with him. They always have been. If he hasn't told them, I wonder if his sister would know. I don't think he would keep her in the dark. The conversation dies after that, with him resting his head on my shoulder. I'm okay with that, even if it's a bit uncomfortable because he's bigger than me. After a while, though, he pats my back and helps me stand up so that I can go back inside. Lunch goes about as expected without any problems. The food's good, unsurprisingly, and Mike gloats about it in front of Faust. He tries not to give him too much attention, but we can all tell he's starting to think Mike's better at cooking than him. However, as soon as we finish eating and cleaning the dishes, Ed disappears from our sight, but he comes back just as fast with a couple of board games. Okay, Gus texted me to let us know that he finished eating too, and he'll be coming over anytime, so I'm going to get the first game ready. Pictionary, right? I wanted to start with the other one, but alright, I'll have to kick ass in this one too. These aren't video games, Hector. You might want to hold your tongue. To be fair, these games don't require a lot of strategy to win, so it could be anyone. Even Mike? Fuck you. I can win any board game if I try hard enough. A knock on the door interrupts us, and Ed's ears perk up, an excited grin plastered on his face. Before he storms over to the door, opening it. He hugs the otter in front of him before making him leave his sandals behind. Then, they step inside. Hey guys, how's it going? It's nice to see you again, Gus. Right? Absolutely. Well, we do need six players to play- Oof! Mike visibly elbows Hector on his sides while keeping his smile. Meanwhile, Hector looks like he's plotting his assassination. I was just going to say that I'm really glad to see him here anyway, you BDSM aficionado. Hector, please, leave something for the bedroom. Y'all still as lively as ever, I see. Come on, murder each other during the games, not now. I'm assuming Ed has told you the plan for today, right? While Ed leaves our side to keep preparing a small whiteboard for us to draw with, how did he bring that here? Anyway, while he does that, Gus sits next to me, kicking his legs, being careful not to hit any of the guys in front of us on the table. Kinda. Said we'd be playing some of his games, so I'd figured they'd be board games or something. Pretty much. We're gonna play Pictionary. Ah, uh, I heard about it, but I'm not sure how to play it. We'll divide into three teams of two, 
and each of us will write a word that we'll put in the bucket. After that, one person will take a paper and he'll draw it on the whiteboard for his teammate. If he guesses it right under a minute, our team gets a point. But if he doesn't, you don't earn anything. Sounds easy. What do the winners get? What do you mean? We're playing for fun. Mm, that's okay and all, but if we're playing against each other, there need to be stakes. I knew I liked you for a reason. As long as it's not something too extreme, I'm okay with that. I'm hard to embarrass, though. Don't act as if you've already lost. I'm assuming I'm going to be in your team, so you better try hard, Mike. Please, I never give up. You should know that better than anyone. Alright. I'm into it. I'm not going to back out from a challenge. What should it be? Hmm. How about this? We'll use a second bucket for consequences instead of points. If your team loses, you take a consequence from it. And the loser team has to do whatever it says. That could work. We can choose our own dares. That being said, keep it friendly, Hector. Everyone always expects the worst from me. I'm just a sheep. Alright, any questions? Everything but the teams are ready, so... How should we pair up? I take a second to think about who... I choose Faust. As expected. Well, I, Ed. You've seen me draw before. My chances will improve with you. Agreed. Show me what you're made of, gamer. Ignore that. That was cursed. <laughs> Welp, I'm not disappointed, but I guess it's you and I, Gus. Couldn't have chosen a better partner anyways. We reposition ourselves around the table according to our new teams, having the whiteboard either in front of us or to our side. Then Ed gives us a small piece of paper along with a pen to write our own ideas and consequences, one for each. Alright, what should be my drawing idea? The void. <laughs> uh... Hmm... Sure, why not? It's not super complicated, and I wonder how someone would draw that. Okay, I put the piece of paper in the first bucket, then I get a second one for the consequences. Unlike the drawing idea, I know exactly what I want to put in here. Smooch your partner in the lips. I grin, enjoying the reactions in my head, beforehand, before I put it in the second bucket. Once we're all done, Ed moves them around with one of his hands before sitting back on his chair. All right, we should start. That'll be us, I presume. Obviously. Mike excitedly sinks his hand inside the first bucket, getting a small piece of paper and standing up so that he can walk near the whiteboard. He looks a bit confused once he opens it, as if he's thinking how he's going to draw it before he gets to it. Whoa, wait, I didn't even start counting, Mike. Ah, sorry. Are you ready, Faust? I'm not sure if I'll figure out your riddles, but sure. Let's give this a shot. Alright, we have one minute starting now. The lion turns around as soon as he hears that, drawing in a motivated way. He seems to be drawing a, a person. No, it's very small though, and he's adding a lot of details to the face. I think I know what he's trying to do though. A, uh, a person? Come on, more than that. A, a pig? What? No. Okay, okay, okay. I can't help but giggle already, as I know he got my paper. He's trying to draw a bat, but he's not doing a very good job, especially with how small they are. What, what the fuck? A, a kid? A child? Mm. Mike taps his foot on the floor, looking nervous. Time is running out. Faust doesn't seem to be getting what he's trying to draw. Suddenly he turns around, drawing the ear of a bat. But it looks more like a cone or something. It kind of looks like a tomato, like a tomato wedge. You haven't just drawn that child's penis? <laughs> what? You haven't just drawn that child's penis? Faust, what? The entire room just loses it and I start laughing along with the others. Even Faust and Mike seem to be smiling. 
even if Mike is visibly frustrated. He draws an arrow that goes from the head of the bat to the ear, but it doesn't seem to be clearing things up for Faust. I don't... Oh, a bat! Ah, what else? What do you mean? Time's up! Fuck! It was a bat's ear! Mike looks utterly defeated. Dang. Meanwhile, Faust is puffing his cheeks like a kid when they lose. That was a fun struggle. Come on, I did my absolute best. You can't blame me for this. I can, and I absolutely will. How could I have guessed that from your hieroglyphs? Hey, stop delaying the inevitable and choose a consequence already. Let's get this over with. Faust sighs, picking one piece of paper from the second bucket, then opens it. And then he puts it back without saying anything, staring daggers at Hector. What? Is it mine? Do you have to splash each other's face with water? Huh, I have to admit I was expecting something else from Hector. Wait, the stay in your underwear for the rest of the game wasn't yours? Ha, that's really what it said? Ah, that one's mine. Figured it'd be funny. He says that, but after today's chat, I'm pretty sure he's just looking for an excuse to check someone out. Smooth, Gus. A bit creepy, but smooth. That's something that I would expect from my friends. Faust turns to Mike with a desperate look, but his shirt is already off and he's unbuttoning his pants, dropping them on the floor without any kind of shame. You seriously didn't think that this would stop me. That's really not fair. Can I go change first? Don't tell me you're not wearing any underwear, Faust. Please. I do, but it's not... Listen, my tail is big. It's hot outside, so I... Stop looking for excuses, man. It's for fun. Loosen up. Faust looks at Mike as if he's ready to punch him, but he sighs and gives up, unbuttoning his shirt. Shortly after that, his shorts go down too, and I understand what he meant. He's wearing a jockstrap that are not leaving a lot to the imagination. Damn, Faust, rocking that look. How can you wear that? It feels uncomfortable just to look at them. Then don't look at them. None of you have to stare. Let's move on. They're actually very comfortable, Hector. Nice ass, man. <laughs> a loud smack can be heard across the room when Mike slaps Faust's butt with his open hand. Faust looks embarrassed, and surprisingly, he doesn't react with a punch. Instead, he keeps looking shocked. Mike, you slapped his ass too hard. You broke him. Hey, but he's cheating. He's still wearing his goggles. That too? He lets out an almost depressed sigh before removing them, caressing their sides with his thumbs before leaving them on the table. There. Can we move on while I still have some dignity in me? I don't think anyone here has that anymore, don't worry. And lighten up, you have a nice body, man. Enjoy it. Let's move on. I'm having a lot of fun with this, but I guess we should give it a shot now, right Gus? Sure thing. You want to go or should I? Let me try drawing. I think I'll have an easier time than guessing. It's all yours then. Admittedly, I'm having fun, but considering this consequence, I'm actually worried about losing now. The stakes are high, it seems. I stretch my arm towards the first bucket, picking one of the papers in it and opening it to myself. Weather. Just... just weather. I predict I'm going to fail this one. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough time to draw different types of weather in time for Gus to pick up. Look at his face! He got a complicated one! Come on, Robert! Lose like us and lose the pants! Be quiet, I need to focus. I'm with you, Rob, don't worry. We have this. Okay, if you're ready, you have one minute starting now. As soon as Ed gives me the go, I start drawing a cloud. Gus doesn't say anything, so I try to draw the raindrops. Okay, I should draw some snow next. Weather! I draw a second cloud, giving a bit of a distance between each cloud so Gus sees it's different. 
Wait, wait, he got it. Shit, you actually got it, it's weather. What? That's cheating. Yeah, I don't believe Gus just guessed right out of the first try. I wasn't cheating, and if I was, can you prove it? Besides, with how nervous Rob looked, I figure we wouldn't be something as simple as rain. All I had to do was think farther than that. That's... That's Hector levels of overthinking things. Hector gave me a bit of a clue with what he said before that. Thank you. Alright. I need to shut up the next time. Got it. Meanwhile, it's your turn, losers. I move closer to Gus, so I high-five him, and it slaps so hard that it can be heard all around the room. Nice. We sit back on our chairs while we wait for Ed or Hector to stand up. So considering I'm the one that likes comics, and the artist out of the two of us, I should be the one drawing. No complaints. I'm sure we'll figure it out super fast. We'll see about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard a loser trying to be cool. Let him be. He's already dead. Heartless. The two of you. Ed bows in front of us in a joking manner and picks a paper from the first bucket, opening and reading it. Okay, I know you wrote this one, Mike. It's so obvious. Come on, I try not to put anything related to me. How did you know? Ed doesn't respond. Instead, he just gives him a very sassy look before he turns around to draw on the whiteboard. And then he proceeds to draw a dick. Mike, come on! Yes, it has to be Mike. I could see Hector writing that, though. I wouldn't have written dick, please. I'd aim for something more complex that's around the dick, like pubes or... Ha! A loud, dry laugh comes out of Ed, scaring me at least. He just turns around, not drawing anything else. I was literally about to draw that, but now I don't have to. You can't be real right now. Wait, it was actually pubes? Oh my god. Congratulations for thinking just like Mike. But I don't know what you expected when you're following his example most of the time. Can you all fuck off? It was a smart choice. I don't know how to feel about this victory. But at least, I don't have to do anything embarrassing. See? This is the reason why I chose you as my partner. We think outside the box. Ah oh, well, I'm happy for them. If Hector or Ed would have gotten a very embarrassing consequence, they probably would have dropped from the game. So, should I go for another round? I'm having fun so far, so I don't mind. Sure, but I'd really like to wear some clothes by now, please. Speak for yourself, I feel super fresh like this. Mike, come on, wear some pants. Okay, I guess we can take a short break before the next round to get some water and get dressed again. Just as Ed said, we took a small break before we gave the game another chance. This time we dropped the consequences part of the game because it was clear that Hector was trying to look uncomfortable with it, but it wasn't. I don't mind that much, but it made the next round a bit less interesting. Anyway, we also switched to some card games, but I suck at those. I hate card games. I lose most of those games. I stretch on my chair, feeling the need to stand up or move, or something. I just know my butt is starting to feel uncomfortable in this chair for so long. Uh, you doing okay, Rob? Yes, but I guess I'm a bit tired of playing. Do you mind if I step out? You only want out because you've been losing non-stop at the card games. I won't deny it, but I seriously need to stand up or walk somewhere. Well, since you mentioned it, it's not that late yet, but maybe we could start our core meeting, Gus? If the Moreland guys are okay with it, sure. It's fine by us. Ed and Rob warned us ahead of time. I won't lie, I'm very curious as to what you're going to be doing alone. Probably catch up on all times, talk about boys and all that. Ah, so it's a gossip meeting, I see. Alright, I can respect that. How long should we wait for you to come back? 
Should we make dinner or something? Mmm, now that you mention it, if y'all are okay with it, maybe I could cook something back at my place. That sounds amazing. I mean, no offense to Mike and Faust. I love your cooking, but I'd love to taste what Gus can cook too. Definitely count me in. That way you'll also have to wait less time for dinner, since you'll have to cook less. Everyone wins! Speaking of, I'm actually hungry again. You'll have to wait a bit longer for dinner, buddy. I still haven't talked with Faust about what we'll do today. Since we'll be less people, we could prepare something a bit more elaborate. It'll take less time and food. That sounds awesome! I'm not kicking you core guys out, but you should definitely have dinner outside more often. Well, in that case, we'll make something cool too. Ah, I bought some food today, but don't expect anything super fancy, sorry. I'm sure we'll figure something out. Anyways, before we leave, did you guys eat what I gave you the other day? No, we've kept them in the freezer so they'll stay good for today. Ah, that sea salted chocolate? I ate it already. Hector! Wah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, sorry. While those two argue over whatever Hector was trying to pull off, I walk to the kitchen and open the fridge. Both our chocolates are still in the back of the fridge, slightly hidden to let the others know it's not for them, but not enough to be actually hidden. Man, I can't wait to try it. I'm salivating just thinking about it. I reach for them, close the fridge, and come back to the living room. Once there, I toss Ed's chocolate to him, and he catches it without hesitation. Awesome. I was actually worried Hector ate it for real. I said I was kidding. Are you heading out now then? Yes, I think so. The core meeting event is officially on. Do you have to make everything sound dorky? You know I'll combust if I don't. <laughs> you two are adorable. Let's get going then. Have fun, and Gus, take care of them, okay? For sure. You take care of Hector and Faust too. I'm sorry, what? You're telling the man-child to take care of us? You got it. The house is going to be destroyed when we're back. We'll all have to sleep at your place, Gus. We'll cross that bridge when we have to. Let's go. It's very refreshing to see Gus so excited. It brings me back to when I was a kid and we decided to explore some places together. He leads the way while we wave our hands at the guys that stay behind, then leave the house. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. So that was an eventful first part of day four. Going out with Gus in the morning to go do some grocery shopping for him. <laughs> and then coming back and playing Pictionary. But before that, having that little talk with um, Faust. And it's nice to see that he's resisting the urge, but um, as with most smokers, I'm pretty sure that eventually he's going to have a puff, but hopefully it won't, you know, be that, you know, soon. Or at the very least, that he might be able to control it to just like once in a while, not like every single day. So yeah. Oh, and yeah, the Pictionary game. <laughs> There is actually a scene that I didn't get, which you could get if you play core yourself. Links down in the description. <laughs> and um, I won't tell you what it's about, but it does have to do with my favorite otter. And yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, thank you all for watching and slash listening. And if you would like to play core yourself, there is a link down in the description. If you would like to support the group, there will be a link down for a Patreon. And if you would like to follow them on Twitter, then there will also be a link down for that. And that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.